Hi, and welcome to our second video in the Field Server Quick Start series brought to you by Sierra Monitor Corporation. My name is Mac, and today we will work with the Field Server Toolbox, which is the tool we use to find and get connected to the field servers on our network. This video is applicable to both the Field Server X30 and Quick Server products. In essence, using the toolbox should be a simple process. You just open the toolbox, click on the field server you would like to work with, and go straight to the GUI to work with the field server further. However, this brief demonstration left a lot of information out that we should be aware of with this tool. Let's start with how we obtain the toolbox. If your field server shipped with a USB jump drive, then the install for the toolbox can be found there. If a recent jump drive is not available to you, there's no need for concern. Simply go to the Sierra Monitor website and download the install from the Resource Center under the Customer Care tab. When installing the toolbox, I recommend keeping the default install settings the same, unless you absolutely know you need to make certain changes. Note that the toolbox does not install to the program files directory. This is deliberate. Recent versions of Windows apply administrative blocks to this directory for security purposes, and these restrictions interfere with the operation of the toolbox, so please do not install the toolbox there. Once installed, you should have a desktop SMC icon you can click on to open the toolbox. Assuming you have the field server powered and connected to your computer via Ethernet, you should see the field server show up in the toolbox almost immediately. If this does not happen, then you have some troubleshooting to do and should know the following before you do. Firstly, the field server must be on the same subnet as your computer. All quick servers and field servers ship from the factory with a default IP address of 192.168.2.101. So, setting your computer IP address to 192.168.2. something other than 101 should do the trick for making the connection. In very isolated cases, a firewall might be preventing communication to the field server, especially if there's something special about the security being applied to your network's web pages. The field server uses port 80 to browse the web pages on the unit, and so this port needs to be open before you will see it. So if you take care of these few details, you should be able to see your field server from the toolbox without any issues. Now there are a few other features for on the toolbox that you should be aware of that will make your life a lot easier. One of them is the gear icon that you can see here. If you click on that, it will give you a menu that will allow you to set network settings and transfer configuration files and restart the field server and set the field server time. Uh, these are all features that you normally do from the GUI, but being able to do it directly from the toolbox does have its uses and can make life a lot simpler when you're setting field servers up. Now the one feature you should be very much aware of is our diagnostic feature. If you click on the heartbeat icon over here, it's going to bring up a menu that allows you to do device diagnostics. Now the field server device diagnostics allow you to create files um, that include all the diagnostics needed to evaluate a field server if you're having issues with it. And you're going to find that if you call technical support, they're probably going to be, going to be requesting this file anyway. So if you do have problems, I would strongly suggest getting started with creating a diagnostic before you even call support. So let's have a look at the selections that you have available to you before starting a diagnostic. Now, um, usually when you have to take a diagnostic, most of the time you do not need to do a full diagnostic, and this is little understood. Um, it's often good enough just to do a snapshot. Now, the difference between a full diagnostic and a snapshot is whether the field server diagnostic package will actually take a serial capture or not. Now, a serial capture is what is taken on the serial port capturing all the data going inside, in and out of a serial port. If you have an application where you're not using a serial port or your issue is not with the serial port, you do not need to take a full diagnostic, you only need to take a snapshot. And as you can see, once you choose snapshot as an option, um, a lot of the other options are grayed out and it's a lot simpler process. So when needed, just do a snapshot. Don't worry about doing a full diagnostic. 
Now we're not going to discuss advanced options in this video so our next step is just to press the start diagnostic button. When you do that the application will start reading all the information it needs from the field server and this can take several minutes so some patience is required with this process. If you have a very large configuration um, you should allow for at least 10 minutes worth of uh, waiting before being concerned about the snapshot not completing properly. So give it time and allow it to do its job. When you're finished taking the snapshot you're going to get a message saying diagnostic test completed. This will ask if you want to open the folder in which the diagnostic has been stored and you do want to do that so once you push the open key you're going to get a window that will show you the zip file that has been created with all the diagnostic information inside of it. This is the zip file that you want to send to technical support when you're requesting information from them. Now uh, let's take a look what's inside. You can see that for a snapshot uh, all it does is it uh, fetches the configuration file from the field server and it creates a file called ruidebug.log which is quite interesting it's very text readable so if you know something about the field server you can go and do some diagnostics yourself as you can see all the information that is within the field server is also in this diagnostic snapshot file. If you do have an application where you have a serial protocol on your field server and you're having issues with that particular serial protocol, then when taking a diagnostic capture, the full diagnostic is warranted and you want to leave that setting as is. Um, in addition, you would probably do best just leaving the settings that are below the full diagnostic in their default settings, which is five minutes for the capture period and time stamping each character. If it's necessary to do something else, you will probably get guidance from technical support to do so. Now, when you've completed your full diagnostic, which takes a little bit longer because it does a snapshot, and then it does five minutes of serial capture, and then it does another snapshot, um, once again, you'll be given the option to open the folder, or you can click on the open containing folder at the bottom, and that's going to give you the folder where all the um, diagnostic information went. Now I've extracted this out. You can see there's a lot more information available in a full diagnostic than there was in a straight snapshot. Uh, once again though the RUI debug file is there and the configuration file was uploaded so that is the same as well. Now a couple of things you need to uh, be aware of uh, in taking the full diagnostic capture. And the most important one is that you will not get any of this if you abort the diagnostic capture at any time. So please, once you've set the capture period, allow it to run through the full capture period if you want to make sure that you get all the information, even if your diagnostic is done after a minute. If you've got it set for five minutes, let, the, let it run the five minutes out. Make sure the actual diagnostic completes. The other thing you want to be aware of with a full diagnostic capture is that it's actually going to ask you when the serial capture starts to emulate any event that you want to emulate and this is a reminder there just to make sure that if you do have some event emulation that needs to happen while the serial capture is occurring that you actually do that so for example if you don't know why a certain alarm is not coming through then you're going to want to activate that alarm while the serial capture is running so that it's part of the communication log the final thing I want to discuss with you in this quick start is the connectivity light and simply put that needs to be green for you to make a good connection to your field server using the GUI. Now if it's not green, if it's yellow or blue, or, um, then chances are you need to go back to what we discussed in the earlier part of this video and make sure that your IP address settings are correct for the subnet. And that is the end of this quick start presentation. Please like us below if you found this useful and let us know in the comments if there are any other features or functions you'd like to see a video on. Thank you and all the best with your field server application.